Of course, one key question is about the relationship between India uh, and China. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen uh, difficult uh, moments in the Himalaya on the border. Uh, we see a kind of competition in the Indian Ocean. How would you describe the uh, relationship between China and India? Uh, I'll need a lot of adjectives. Uh, I mean, it's definitely a very complex relationship because uh, if you look at it, you know, these are uh, two civilizational states. They have a long history. Uh, they are also states who at various points of time in history were very big in the, in the uh, global economy, in the global society. Uh, they had bad periods in their history. Both of them are reviving or rejuvenating in a way. And uh, uh, also as civilizational societies, they are, uh, you know, their, their uh, uh, borders, their uh, identity, their interests, these are getting, you know, more sharply defined, which happens in a, in a more modern age. Uh, and they are the only two countries which are, have a population of more than a billion. And what happens uh, uh, normally when any country rises uh, is it has ripple impact on the neighborhood. Now, these two countries also have the singular uh, uh, honor of being each other's neighbors. So each one's rise has a, has a ripple impact. They have a common neighborhood as well, and they are neighbors to each other. So if you look at all these factors, and, and they have different political systems, they have different economic systems. So if you take the totality of this, you can understand why I selected a safe but expressive word like uh, complex. Uh, we had, uh, you know, we not had an easy relationship in the past. It began reasonably well in the late 40s. Uh, there were frictions in the 50s. There was a war in 1962. Uh, then there was a period really from the late 50s till 19... Uh, uh, I mean, for about 15 years, we didn't have an ambassador. We sent back an ambassador in 76. Uh, but it was only in the late 80s that really the relationship, you can say, normalized. Now, the basis for the normalization was that because we have a, a disputed border, the entirety of the border, which is almost 3,500 kilometers, is disputed uh, and is being negotiated. Uh, so the, the basis, obviously, for a, uh, for a, a good relationship, or a, I would say even a normal relationship, was that there would be peace and tranquility in the border. So after things began to take a better turn in 88, we had a series of agreements which, would, which stabilized the border. Then trade began, you know, more contacts, poli politicians, generals, tourists, all what normally neighbors do. Now, what happened in 2020 was that in violation of uh, multiple agreements, uh, for some reason, which is still not entirely clear to us, we can speculate on it, uh, the Chinese actually moved a very large number of troops uh, to the line of uh, actual control uh, uh, at the border. Uh, and naturally, in response, we moved our troops up. This was a, it was very difficult for us because we were in the middle of a COVID lockdown at that time. They had come out of COVID, uh, that first round of COVID. Now, uh, we could see straight away that this was a very dangerous development because the presence of large number of troops in those extreme heights uh, and extreme cold uh, in, in near proximity was could lead to a mishap. Uh, and that's exactly what happened uh, in June of uh, uh, 2020. Uh, so the issue for us is, uh, you know, uh, why they have uh, disturbed that peace and tranquility, why they moved those troops, uh, and, uh, you know, how do you, how do you now deal with this very close-up uh, situation? So we've been negotiating now for close to four years, uh, and the first step of that is what we call disengagement, which is that their troops go back to their normal operating bases, and our troops go back to our normal operating bases, and where required, we have an arrangement about patrolling, because both of us patrol uh, regularly uh, in that border because, as I said, it's not a, uh, it's not a legally uh, delineated border. Uh, now, uh, uh, the, those negotiations are going on. We made some progress. Uh, I would say roughly, you can say about 75% of the disengagement problems are sorted out. We still have some, some things to do. Uh, but there's a bigger issue that, you know, if both of us have brought forces close up, uh, and in that sense, there's a level of militarization of the border has increased, uh, how does one deal with it? I think we have to deal with it. But in the meanwhile, after the clash, it has affected actually the entirety of the relationship because you can't have, uh, you know, uh, violence on the border and then say the rest of the relationship is insulated from it. So trade has got affected uh, uh, and uh, the exchanges uh, have got affected. Uh, so it is, it is not normal, I mean, to put it 
uh, very uh, politely. Uh, so uh, we, we hope that the, if there is a solution to the disengagement and there is a return to peace and tranquility, then you know we, we can look at other other possibilities. So that is the immediate issue. But I think there are larger issues in respect of India-China. Uh, we have long struggled with the trade issue. Uh, I've been ambassador in China, so I can tell you from my time there uh, that we are talking, you know, 15 years ago, uh, that uh, we feel that uh, the economic relationship with China has been very unfair. It has been very imbalanced. Uh, that we don't have the market access there. They have much better market access in, in India. Uh, we have concerns today. Uh, uh, again, this is autonomous of, of the border situation in, in various areas, you know, technology, in telecom, in digital, uh, and, and those are issues. And now, as you've said, we also uh, do monitor very carefully what happens in the Indian Ocean. Uh, so for us, uh, any uh, radical shift uh, or, uh, you know, change your 